talking about love 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 is a beautiful thing like i have said before but talking about love love is different from infatuation i was having a chat now with someone that was asking me question he loved to ask a, a me question he loves asking questions about things that he doesn't you know that he wants to know more or, or want to understand you know he wants to know more about or want to have a more in-depth knowledge of and our topic today was our topic today is about love Law comes with commitment. Law comes with loyalty. Law comes with trust. And true law never wears out. When you find true law, no matter how long you are in that relationship, no matter the age of both party, it will not change what you feel for one another, no matter what. What you feel for one another will be like I said, oh, yesterday. That is what true love is. And that is what true love is all about. Because when the question was asked, like, ah, a man can love someone now and it wears out. Or a woman can love someone now and it wears out. And it switch from love to loyalty. And I said, no, 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 no. That's wrong. In such a case, with the description that was given to me by the person that was asking that question, that means what the person felt is infatuation. Infatuation is different from love. When you have, feel infatuation for someone, infatuation, this is the difference between love and infatuation. When you have infatuation for someone, the feeling you have for that person will be based on conditions like, oh, appearance. I fall in love with this person because of appearance. Appearance matters. Looking attractive, looking good matters. But it will not be the primary reason or basis through which or in which you fall in love with that person. Infatuation will be conditional. Your feelings towards the person will be conditional in terms of, oh, he or she is not looking beautiful anymore. He or she is now old. He or she is this. He or she is that. I need a younger person. I need an attractive person. I need a presentable person. Being presentable is important for everyone, both party, both the male and female in the relationship or the ones of us that are not in a relationship. Looking good for yourself makes you feel confident in yourself. It boosts our morals as well. So it's not mainly because of our partners that we're looking attractive. We're making ourselves look nice and attractive for. It's not because we want to only please our partner. Primarily, it should be because we want to feel good about ourselves. The moment, God forbid, and I pray for the help of God for the people that find themselves in that situation. The moment something happens and you are not in the position or condition to make yourself, you know, beautiful the way you used to. Or this is the ultimate test of true of love, uh, uh, ultimate test of true love as well. When a man or a woman, God forbid, something happened and that person find himself or herself in a 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 disadvantaged position or situation. Let's say someone became crippled and your partner still stays with you despite him. And your partner still loves you. 
still care for you and still, you know, look at you with the same eyes, never changes your condition or your situation, change of circumstances, never changes the feelings that your partner has for you. The heights of love in which he gazes or she gazes and look at you. When your change of circumstances never change that, that is true love. When your partner stick by you or stay with you, true thick and thin, and it does not change anything whatsoever. Or the feelings he or she has for you whatsoever, and you are together. Till death do you part. That is true love. This is what love is all about. Love is unconditional. And like I said earlier, it is normal for everyone to like, oh, I must be well groomed. I must be presentable. Not for your partner alone, but for yourself. Like I said earlier, primarily for yourself to make you feel good about yourself. To boost your self-confidence. We do this to boost our self-confidence, to make us feel good about ourselves, to appreciate ourselves, and to even, you know, in a way, telling God that, oh, Lord, I love the way you created me. And I'm saying thank you by taking care of myself because I'm the work of your hands that you made wonderfully and perfectly made. Love does not set standard. It is normal, like I said earlier, and it is natural to be well-groomed because it's hygienic to be well-groomed. It is hygienic to be presentable, to look presentable and everything. It even makes our partner be proud of us that, oh, and you'll be ready, be a male or female, be ready to show off your partner, which is normal, which is natural, but our love must not be based on all these things. That is that has to do with hygienic aspect of we as person as people. Love does not attach any condition. Ah, it's too tall. It's too short. It's too fat. It's too thin. It doesn't attach any condition whatsoever. Because as a young people, when we meet as a young people. And we fall in love with one another. I want us to know when we fall in love with someone, like when, oh, I, oh, I meet my, oh, I'm Mr. Right. Oh, I, I've just met my Miss Right. And we fall with that, in love with that person. And we fall in love with that person. As a young, for example, or 20, 20 years, 18 upward. 18 up to like 20, 30 years person, 30 years old person, and you meet and you fall in love with one another. Or let's say, yeah, from 30 to 35, 18, 18 to 35 years old person, when you meet and you fall in love with one another, you cannot compare the way you look, your stature rather, you cannot compare the way you look and your stature to the way you were, you will be by the time you are in your 40, 50 and upward and upward. It is the law of the nature. The older we get, our stature, our, our stature changes. Our looks changes, our appearance changes, our body changes. And if someone said, because of that, I'm no more in love with this person. If someone said, because of that, I'm no more in love with this person, then that love is conditional. It's not true love. It's, I'd rather say, is infatuation. And that's why courtship is also important. To be sure that, oh, I'm compatible with this person. Compatibility is important before people go into relationship. We can go into relationship 
and a year, six months, two, three, four, five, six months after, or a year, two, three years later, and you say we are not compatible. Or many years after you've been in the relationship and you say we are not compatible. We cannot do that. Right from the beginning, courtship is important to know that, oh, we are compatible. And sometimes people do this and say, oh, after many years of relationship, and they say, oh, we are no more compatible. And they go for divorce, separation, etc. And some, that, some people that are courting for a long time, long time courtship, this is my own opinion. So, someone that is serious minded, you don't have to court for five, ten years before you get married. But I stand to be corrected by saying this. But well, that's my candid opinion. And after 10 years or five years, and you don't say, I can't marry you, we are not compatible. I stand to be corrected, but if you are not, if that person is not ready to settle down with the person you are courting or you are going out with, why do you waste the time of that person for five, 10 years, six months, one year or, or more? When you know that I do not, you do not have the intention of settling down with a person, and they will hide under the the that uh, uh, that phrase that oh we are not compatible, and sometimes when we talk of compatibility, being compatible or not, a woman that you call you you go out in courtship, or a man that you go out. And you're caught together for some time. I know that sometimes people do hide their true behavior until after marriage, then you see their true color, which sometimes might be too late. And you'll be like, I've just gotten married. If I had seen the true nature of this person, I wouldn't have settled down with the person. And some will endure with the expectation and hope and prayer that the person will change or I will be able to manage. And some, instead of wasting their time further in the relationship or in the marriage, they go for divorce straight away because they cannot cope with the kind of person that they, 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 they find themselves settled, settled down with in terms of the fact that the person hides is or a true color or true behavior until after you settle down. There has been inst instances like that also. But instances whereby a relationship, a long term relationship of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years and above, even 20, 15, 20 years. After 20 years or 30 years of, you know, of relationship, all of a sudden, one of the couple will now decide that we are not compatible. That means true love. The marriage or the union was not based on true love in the first place. It's based on infatuation. And the infatuation that the person has for that person has worn out. And they will go and say, oh, we are not compatible. And another thing that I want us to look into is that the person that said we are not compatible. What has changed about that person? For him to now point accusing finger and say we are not compatible. Something must have changed about that person. For him to say that the person that you've been with in the relationship for a long, long, long time, for many years, all of a sudden you now discover or you now come to realization that you are not compatible. In some cases, that means, in most cases rather, that means the person that is accusing or that is saying that the, it's not, he find his partner or a partner not compatible is the one that has changed. That also happens in the relationship. If we look deeper into the whole relationship, we'll see that a person that said, oh, we are no more compatible after many years of relationship is the one that has actually changed from being a compatible partner into an uncompatible partner. And they will say, oh, we are not compatible. 
because the person has changed. And that can happen, changes can happen also in the relationship due to many reasons. If your partner is involved with a bad group of companies or friends, that can affect a relationship. It can change the, your partner and that person can change to a different person. Then well, there's this popular saying that it says, show me your friend and I'll to tell you the kind of person you are. Bad companies also changes people sometimes. Bad association changes people sometimes. The people we hang out with, we move around with, we, we call our friends or group of companies that we associate with and sometimes can change people sometimes. Someone that is a lawyer and honest partner can become a cheat or can become anything that is contrary to a, a loving partner. Though in some cases that affect a partner sometimes and makes them change from compatible person to an uncompatible person. And in most cases, they'll be the one to be they'll be the first person to point that kiss figure and say to their long-term partner that we are no more compatible. Because they know that they are no more the same person they were before they went they 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 go into a relationship with their partner and they will point accusing finger first at their partner and say i'm not we are not compatible anymore because this person has changed because they do not want to accept the fact the honest truth that they are they themselves are the one that has changed from being a loving compatible lawyer honest person to uncompatible partner bad influence on people changes people as well so and in such a case where there is nothing like a lot a, a lot for someone wearing out there has been cases that people that you be like what did this person see in that person when you look at the behavior and characteristic and characteristic and behavior of the person, and you'll be like, I can never be with this kind of a person, but yet he or she is madly in love with the person. Because it's he or she is blinded by love. And that is the difference between true love and infatuation. All having said all this. Like I said, infatuation is the kind of love that wears out. True love never wears out. It would be like I say, you fell in love with one another like yesterday. Having said all this, an healthy relationship is not the best relationship to stay in. If a, if a relationship is unhealthy, a relationship that you are constantly abused mentally, psychologically, emotionally, or physically is unhealthy. In every aspect, if you are constantly abused and treated in a dehumanizing way, that kind of a relationship is unhealthy. No matter how much the love that you felt for the person, it's better to get out of that relationship before you find yourself six foot under. An healthy relationship is not advisable for anyone to keep on that kind of a relationship. Abusive relationship is an healthy relationship. It does not matter what kind or form of abuse it is. It could be physical, it could be uh, psychological, it could be emotional, it could be mental wise. Some face all 
Some face just the physical. Unhealthy relationship is unhealthy relationship. Either you seek for help for you both to continue in the relationship and seek for help for the person with the consent of the person so that the relationship will be will be what you both of you can work on it and make it healthy or if anyone's life is in danger due to an healthy relationship or your sanity is in is at risk is the or your life is at risk the best thing is to get out of that relationship while you can before it will be too late Abuse is an abuse. There is no other way to describe it. And in most cases, abusive relationship turn a woman in the or a man in, when they try to defend themselves, you they end up in trouble because I've heard of cases of women in abusive relationship that end up in 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 the process of defending themselves, they end up, you know stabbing their own husband or killing their partner when after many years of taking it in, bottling it in, and they, they, they just lose it and they end up killing their partner and they end up in jail, life sentence for murder. And in such a case, they don't get justice for the abuse, abusive relationship that they've been in for years and endured for years but once they lose the the, the, the when was they when, once they lose total control and they couldn't take it anymore in the in the in the process of defending themselves sometimes they end up committing a crime a crime of murder and a crime is a crime a crime is a crime That person, that means the person suffer in two ways. Abusive relationship that push the person to the limit to commit a crime. The person suffers in two ways. And that's why the best thing is to pull out of that relationship where you can. So that you yourself don't get yourself killed by your abusive partner. Or kill your abusive partner in the process of defending yourself or commit a crime in the process of defending yourself. True love or infatuation, either of the two, abuse is an abuse and is unacceptable. Abusive relationship can turn someone into something else. Mm -hmm. Can even make a, a, a decent person mm -hmm. lose mm -hmm. his or her sanity sometimes because mm -hmm. the relationship is abusive. Mm -hmm. It can also sometimes push. The person that is being abused can be pushed out into the hands of other men as well. Or if it's a man, other woman, for comfort and love that is, is being, yeah, she's being stabbed off or is being stabbed off. That is, in some circumstances, that happens. Not all circumstances. And having said all this, I'm not giving excuse for adultery either. And that's why it's better to pull out while you can. Before things get out of control. Now back to love and infatuation. Love will, in the eyes of two people that fall in love, I'm talking about true love here. It should be like I said, it, they, they fell in love yesterday. No matter how their age, it will be like I say, it's yesterday that they fell in love. Even up to their gray age, when they are gray-headed, that is what you call true love. 
when the 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 physically the, the their looks change due to age it will not affect what they feel for one another that is what you call true love but in case of infatuation it's not like that it's different infatuation but when they put when someone mistake infatuation for love that love wears out for one reason or the other it wears out and infatuation will set standard for you infatuation will give you conditions infatuation will say oh it's too hot oh you're looking to this oh you're looking to that it's good like i said earlier for everybody to look good for yourself Number one priority reason for people to look good, to be well groomed, is for yourself. Should be you should be the number one reason for looking good for yourself. Other people, other reasons should be secondary. No true love will not be like ah, he's too old, or she's too old. It's too, uh, it's too, it's too, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what word I can use that will be appropriate here. It's too, uh, uh, it won't be like, oh, this person is on the weighty side, or this person is too skinny, or too slender. True love does not do, do that. L true love is more than physical. Is a deeper experience of emotion that no matter what, nothing can kill the fire of true love. No matter what. Unlike infatuation. Infatuation is different. Any little thing or a slight thing, it kills the fire of whatever that person loved, that person said. He or she feels for the person that they believe they're in love with. That is infatuation. Mm. And these are the difference between the two, between true love and infatuation. Mm -hmm. True love always stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. Unlike infatuation, Infatuation cannot stand the, the test of time. The difference between true love and infatuation, I will compare it to a gold. The people that are gold miners, when you pour a gold in the fire, it stands the test of the fury and the heat of that fire. Well, infatuation cannot. It will burn off to ashes. And that's the end of it. You can't bring any end product out of it. That is the difference between true love and infatuation. Infatuation can stand the test of time, but true love can stand the test of time. No matter what happens, no matter how many bridges that you cross together, it will always stand the test of time, no matter what. And it's not based on looks alone. It's based on deeper emotion. Even if that person wants you to look somehow outstanding or, oh, beautiful or whatever, in a loving way, it will tell you, oh, and I would like to see you. And yeah, to satisfy yourself and make yourself feel good and to satisfy your partner, you do it. As long as you feel comfortable doing what your partner said, I would like to. And that, in such a case, it does not mean, you have to be sure that it does not mean that, your, you have to be sure that it does not mean that your partner does not love you or love you less because of the way you look. But because he just wants to, he would love to see you looking nice. Or, you know, presentable or whatever. As long as you are comfortable looking the way your partner said, 
you should look and it's decent before God and man. Why not? Primarily for yourself, secondarily for others or for your partner or for other reason. And may God help us all in Jesus' mighty name. For those that are searching, looking for true love, I pray that God, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, will help us to find true love, flesh of our flesh, bone of our bone. And for those that have found true love, woo, carry on. Keep on loving. Love is a good thing. May God help us all in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 It is a beautiful thing to be in love, to find love. It is a good thing. And thanks for your generous donations. Thanks in advance. And may God bless you as you donate in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.